Hi everyone and welcome to my channel and to this video which is a little bit different from my usual soft pastel related videos. In this age of social media and online promotion it's become really popular to film yourself while you're painting. I've been doing that for YouTube and Patreon for over four years now and at the request of my patrons I decided to make some videos all about the actual process of filming. I hope that you enjoy this here on YouTube. If you do, then please do subscribe here and also consider checking me out on Patreon where you'll not only gain access to my full library of tutorials, you get to request the type of content I make and feed videos like this with your questions. I filmed myself painting for the first time back in 2009. The camcorder was my mum's. The quality was terrible. I used some free software on my computer to make a time lapse and it took forever to render a grainy, poor quality video. Thankfully, both my knowledge and technology have come a long way since then. So in this video, I wanted to focus on all the different types of camera that I've gone through over the years and most importantly, how to get the best view of you while you're working. It's been a pretty steep learning curve for me starting to film my work and I hope that I can pass some of that knowledge along to you if you're looking to film yourself while you're painting. Firstly, the position of your work will make a huge difference. If you're the type of artist who works flat on a tabletop, then it's really pretty simple. You can just position the camera above your work and then you won't ever get in the way of filming. It's pretty simple. But I've always worked upright on an easel and sometimes for bigger paintings, I'll actually tape them onto my studio wall. Now there are sometimes compromises that you have to make for filming while you work but I wasn't about to compromise on that one. I just couldn't work flat with my work. I love working upright. But it does make things a little bit trickier when you're trying to get a clear view of you working without you getting in the way. So in this video, I really want to show you how I get the best view of me while I'm working. Firstly though, I thought that I would talk you through the types of camera that I have gone through. I've managed to upgrade along the way thanks to the support that I receive on Patreon. Now, as I already mentioned, the first videos that I made were with an old camcorder that I borrowed from my mum. So I didn't have that very long. I just made a few videos to see what it was like. And then I left it for many years. And four years ago, I started to create video tutorials for Patreon and to take it a bit more seriously with my YouTube channel as well. So I started with this little GoPro camera. The footage quality on this is actually pretty decent and they're really cheap so that's why I bought one of these just to get me started. But I'd say these days there are many phones that can do an equally good job as this. And in fact, if you're only looking to make shorter, more promotional videos for like Instagram stories, then perhaps your phone camera might be enough. But I needed to be able to record many hours of painting time and then take that footage into editing software to create both time-lapse videos and real-time tutorials. My next camera purchase was this Panasonic camcorder. And I'm really happy with this camera. It has served me well for a couple of years now and I'm still using it to film lots of things. And I'm about to switch to this now so that I can show you this camera, my newest one that I'm filming with right now. So I'm now filming using my Panasonic camcorder that I just showed you, but more recently I've upgraded to this DSLR uh, made by Canon. And I bought this to replace my very old DSLR 
also made by Canon. Now the older ones didn't film video, it was just for photographs, whereas this one does both. And it also means that I can make use of my lovely Canon lenses on this camera. I love the image quality that you get with a good camera like this, but this is by no means the newest model on the market. I usually buy refurbished models second hand and for this camera and for my Panasonic camcorder I think I bought both of those second hand for about £500 each. Now this video is not really about cameras because there are hundreds of cameras on the market and it really just depends on what your budget is. So I suggest that if you're looking to buy a camera decide on your budget first and then do lots of research within that budget. There's tons of information online about all the different cameras. And if budget is an issue, then consider buying second hand from a reputable dealer. I've done this all along and I've always ended up with slightly better gear than I could afford brand new. There are literally hundreds of things that I could talk about relating to filming your work. But in this video, what I wanted to focus on most was the actual physical positioning of the camera while you work. But if filming is a topic that interests you, then leave me some comments below this video and I'll do my best to continue on this theme in my next video. So how do you position your camera to get the best view? Well, for years I've used tripods and they're great, but in a smaller studio like mine, tripods are just another thing to trip over and bump into. I want the viewer to be able to see exactly what colour of pastel I have in my hand and to clearly see every mark that I make. So as a right-handed person, that involves me putting the camera on my left. Now, if I put the camera really far to the left, that means that my picture is really skewed. The perspective looks terrible in the footage. I find that the sweet spot is to have the camera slightly higher on the tripod and almost looking over my left shoulder. So as close as I can get the tripod to me and really looking over my left shoulder, it's really like letting the viewer peep over my shoulder while I work. I've had to get used to working slightly off-center to my work and to also bear in mind not to put my head right in front of the camera, but these are things that I've gotten used to. Now inevitably you might see the tip of your head pop into the footage the odd time. I try to position the camera with the piece slightly over to the right because when I'm making tutorials then I'll have the photo reference on display and I always try to leave a space on screen for that. But you can see my face just coming into the footage at the right side. It's hard to avoid that completely. My biggest tip for this is when you're setting up your camera Make sure that you focus the camera on the painting and then set your focus to manual. Don't leave it on autofocus because the camera will automatically focus onto your head and it'll make your footage blurred. So set your camera to manual focus and then at least the painting will stay nice and crisp and in focus. And that gets me pretty good head-on footage of what's on my easel and allows the viewer to see exactly what my pastels are doing. And if you're left-handed, obviously you would reverse this tactic and have the camera on your right. But my most recent upgrade is helping me do away with tripods in my studio and it's a total game changer. I've just purchased this camera arm made by Manfrotto. I'll add links in the description for everything that I've mentioned in today's video. But this three-way adjustable arm clamps onto anything. It's been my dream to get my camera up off the floor and out of my way. I attached a curtain reel along my ceiling, which I can clamp this to, giving me lots of different angles I can film from in my studio. It 
it's so good. Now I can literally have my camera peeping over my shoulder while I work, seeing exactly what I'm seeing. Something that was quite tricky to do with a clumsy tripod. However, if this is all new to you and you're starting on more of a budget, get yourself a cheaper camcorder, a basic tripod and just get going. Don't let the technology hold you back but it's always worth doing a bit of research to see what the best product is within your price range. This video has really just been to show you my progression through different cameras and to show you exactly how I position the camera to film myself working upright on an easel, as that has taken a bit of experimentation. And I hope that that might help you if that's something you're struggling with. But my first setup involved a wobbly old tripod, a GoPro and some gaffer tape. So there's absolutely no reason why your lack of tech should hold you back. I'm just so grateful that after many years of struggling with that, I'm starting to get the setup now in my studio that's gonna make life a lot easier. And that's all thanks to the support that I get on Patreon. Without them, I would not be making these videos. And in return, I try to reward them with all sorts of useful content, video tutorials, critiques, competitions, free photo reference, and lots more. So check out my channel and my tutorials library for more information. And please do remember to subscribe here on YouTube. But thanks very much for watching. And until next time, not just happy pastling, but happy filming.